all of life and the Earth is connected in some way, whether through a nutrient cycle or a predator-prey relationship. And it's some of these relationships that can get a little bit scary. The first one is a sea cucumber, which is commonly referred to as a stomach on legs, which is funny because that used to be my nickname growing up. Now the sea cucumber will crawl along the bottom of the ocean, eating up as much sediment as it can. It then digests the organic material within that sediment and then poops out sand and the things that it can't digest. Now as well as being a stomach on legs, it needs to breathe. And it does this with a set of internal gills. But instead of bringing the water in and out through its mouth, like we do with air, it brings the water in and out through its bum. Ooh. Now a sea cucumber might seem like perfect prey. It just sits there on the floor, doesn't move very fast at all. But it has a huge array of defenses to help keep those pesky predators at bay. The first is that it has toxic flesh and its internal organs, it can actually eviscerate them from inside and jet them out through its body. And it even has long, sticky, stringy cuvarian tubules that it will shoot out through its bum and these will get trapped and basically glue the things that are trying to eat the sea cucumber. So the sea cucumber can make its very slow getaway. Now it's because of these amazing defenses that makes the sea cucumber and its bum the perfect home for many little animals. Crabs, shrimp, and pearlfish all call a sea cucumber's bum its home. This relationship where the sea cucumber is unaffected and the other animal benefits is called a commensal relationship. But sometimes the pearlfish will enter inside the body of the sea cucumber and eat and nibble its internal organs. This sort of relationship is called a parasitic one because the sea cucumber is negatively affected while the pearlfish benefits. Another parasitic relationship involves an isopod called Cymothea exiguia and a fish's tongue. When the isopod is in its larval stage, it will swim around until it finds a suitable fish. It then enters the fish's body through its gills and attaches onto the tongue of the fish. Here, it will slowly suck the blood out of the tongue and eventually the tongue without blood will die and drop off. The isopod then modifies its body to take up more space in the fish's mouth and becomes its new tongue feeding off the fish's blood and mucus. Could you imagine if the fish goes to the doctor complaining about mouth pain, opens up its mouth and says, ah, more like, ah! <laughs> Now those are some real spooky relationships. I'm glad I'm not a fish's tongue or a sea cucumber. So now for our next activity, let's have a go at making some Halloween jack-o'-lanterns. Now you can either carve these out of a fruit or something like a pumpkin or you can make one out of a paper lantern like we did in week 10. But this time, try to make a jack-o'-lantern that has a parasite in it as well. 